Welcome to Tactical Talk. This is Ann Khan. On January 18th, the Turkish military began an operation in the northern Syrian territory of Afrin, codenamed Operation Olive Branch. The offensive is against the Kurdish-led Democratic Union Party in Syria, the PYD, and also its militant wing, the YPG, and the SDF position surrounding the Syrian city of Afrin. Turkey claims to also be fighting some elements of ISIS within the area. It is the first major military operation by Turkey in Syria since Operation Euphrates Shield. To discuss this topic, we are with us today, Bilal Sambur. Professor Bilal Sambur is the senior expert on Turkey and Middle Eastern affairs for Tactical Talk. He is also an educationist and also a professor in Turkey. Welcome to our show, Bilal Sambur. This is Zan Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. Thank you. Professor Bilal, let's get to the first question. Why was there a need uh, for a Turkish military operation in the Syrian territory? Which militant groups are they targeting? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we must understand the nature of uh, the relationship between Turkey and uh, Syrian war. From the beginning of Syria war, Turkish government uh, declares that Turkey is not going to allow any uh, political changes in, in northern Syria. But after uh, war started, uh, some Kurdish groups, basically PYD uh, and PYG, uh, these are, Turkey consider this group as an extension of PKK, this group uh, established a new political system in northern Syria. They call it uh, Northern Syrian Federation and uh, Cantonal System. Afrin, Jazeera, and Kobani, they are three cantons in this uh, Northern Syrian Federation. Turkey consider Afrin as the center of uh, terrorist activity of PKK and PYG, and of course Turkey considered this development as an existential threat uh, for its existence. In order to stop uh, PKK and PYG existence in Afrin and eliminate uh, the, the system of Northern Syrian Federation, Turkey started uh, uh, started uh, Af Afrin operation or olive branch operation uh, 13 days ago. Uh, in this operation, Turkey directly attempt to uh, destroy uh, Syrian democratic forces and uh, uh, PYG forces together. Uh, but Professor Bilal, uh, how dangerous are these terrorist groups for Turkey? Well, uh, first of all, uh, this uh, organization, uh, this, uh, I mean, we, we must understand uh, the nature of these organizations. In northern Syria, the most powerful political group is uh, PYD, Pop, uh, People's Unity Party. And this People's Unity Party is a Kurdish political party. This political party set up uh, a military wing which has been called PYG, People uh, Defense Unity. Uh, first of all, uh, Turkey said that this uh, PYG and PYD is the extension of PKK. Turkey considered PKK as a uh, as a threat for itself. When consider uh, when unite PYG and PKK with each other, of course Turkey said that there is no differences between PKK and PYG. So uh, both terrorist organization are uh, uh, constituting a threat for me. And when Turkey objected the existence of PYG, United States changed uh, the structure of PYG. Uh, uh, with the help of uh, United States, PYG includes some Arabic uh, 
forces, uh, some uh, Christian forces, and uh, these uh, forces call themselves uh, call themselves as Syrian democratic forces. So uh, Turkey said that uh, Syrian democratic forces is another name for PKK. PK, uh, Syrian democratic forces is a threat for my existence just as PKK is a threat for myself. So uh, the way you look at the way Turkey look at this uh, terrorist organization, there is no differences uh, from Turkish perspective between PKK and between Syrian democratic uh, forces. And United States said that, look, PKK is a terrorist organization, but Syrian democratic forces not, because Syrian democratic forces ca is not the same as PKK. And uh, this is two different positions between Turkey and United States, and I think all the problems uh, originates from these two perspectives. Rightly said. Uh, uh, let's get to the next question. The U.S. has gone on record to have been supporting uh, these groups with training and weapons. Now that Turkey, being a NATO member and also an American ally, attacking U.S. assets within Syria, how would this affect the Turkish and U.S. relations? I think uh, that is a very uh, important question. I mean, that is the heart of the matter. Uh, Turkey, uh, first, let's look at the, from Turkish side. Turkey said that, uh, say to U.S., look, I am your ally in NATO. If you want to do business with any power in Syria, do business with me. Don't do business with terrorist organizations like PYG, PYD, and Syrian Democratic Forces. Uh, that is the uh, argument of Turkish government. On the other hand, U.S. said that, yes, you are my valuable ally. I am happy to do business with you. But uh, in Syria, I need a local forces, a local power, which you can't supply for me. I need you, I need Turkey and Syrian democratic forces works together for me. And Turkey said that, Sorry, I can't work uh, with Syrian forces because these are terrorist organizations. So the problem uh, at this point originates from uh, unbridgeable gap, gap between American perspective and Turkish perspective. And now Turkey said that if you are supporting a terrorist organization, which is against, uh, which is a threat uh, against me. So uh, you are not my, you are not my ally. You are the ally of uh, my enemy. Uh, so as long as uh, you are supporting this terrorist organization, I am not going to cooperate with you. I am going to attack the area which has been controlled by this organization although uh, U.S. presence is there. So now there is a big crisis between Turkey and U.S. And uh, I think after uh, Afrin operation, this crisis is going to be deeper. Uh, let's get to a very important question. If it comes down uh, for the U.S. to choose between their proxy group in Syria and between their NATO member ally, uh, who do you think the U.S. would choose between these two? Well, uh, first of all, uh, from U.S. perspective, uh, it is not uh, the matter of choosing Turkey or a, or a, a proxy group. Uh, U.S. basically said that I have no, uh, I have no luxury to choose uh, either Turkey 
or uh, uh, PYD, uh, Syrian Democratic Forces. Uh, U.S. policy said that uh, I choose both Turkey and uh, Syrian Democratic Forces together. So I am not, I don't think U.S. is going to give up on Turkey or uh, or uh, it is a proxy group in Syria. Basically, U.S. is going to uh, struggle to reconcile uh, the differences between Turkey and this uh, 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 Syrian democratic forces and the best uh, alternative for U.S. is uh, bringing together between Turkey and this group. But of course at the moment it is a dream. But uh, that is what uh, U.S. policy is trying to do. Uh, Professor Bilal, many analysts say that Operation Olive Branch's air operations are being conducted uh, with the consent of the Russians. How do the Russians perceive Operation Olive Branch? Well, uh, first of all, Afrin region is under control of Russia. Uh, before Afrin operation, the, there was a Russian troop in the center of Afrin. Uh, and of course, airspace, Syrian airspace, uh, has been controlled by uh, Russia. Uh, if Russia don't allow you, uh, don't allow Turkey to do a military operation in Syrian airspace and in Syrian ground, uh, it will be impossible for Turkey to do it. To do it now, Turkey is conducting a ground and air operation in Syria. That means that uh, Turkey received uh, permission or green signal from uh, Russia. What is the policy of Russia in this operation? I think uh, at this point there are two main reasons. First, uh, Russia doesn't want to lose uh, the support of Turkey in Syria, uh, as long as uh, the cooperation between Turkey and Russia uh, continues, uh, Russia easily uh, could implement, implement uh, its policy in Syria. That is the first uh, point. The second point is, uh, Russia wants problem crisis within NATO. As long as uh, Turkey works with Russia, uh, Turkey is going to uh, uh, is going to uh, stay uh, far from NATO and US. So that is something Russia uh, really desires. And the final point is, uh, Tur uh, Russia. Uh, uh, wants uh, force Kurds to work with Assad regime. If uh, Turkey uh, destroy uh, Kurdish forces in Afrin, that means that uh, Kurd is not going to uh, is not going to bargain strongly with Assad. They said that uh, probably Kurd will say. There is, a Turk, there is a threat which comes from Turkey in order to protect ourselves, we are going to, we have to surrender ourselves to Assad regime. That is uh, the policy, uh, 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 this is a sort of multidimensional policy uh, Russia is uh, following uh, in Afrin operation. Professor Bilal, let's get to the last question. Uh, what are the latest updates and accomplishments of the Turkish military in Operation Olive Branch? Uh, well, uh, uh, Afrin operation started uh, uh, 13 days ago, and so far Turkey, uh, Turkey alongside uh, with uh, Free Syrian Army. Uh, conducted a big military operation in Afrin and uh, other uh, towns and villages. So far, uh, Turkey said that uh, 
uh, Turkish forces uh, killed around 800 terrorists uh, uh, in this uh, military intervention. And of course, Turkey said that there is no civilian casualty there. And Turkey also uh, said that uh, Turkish army and Free Syrian army control uh, some strategical points around Afrin. And uh, according to Turkish uh, military, uh, within a short period of time, Turkey is going to control uh, Afrin region. And after that, Turkey plans to plans to extend its military military operation uh, throughout uh, Manbij uh, city. So, uh, I mean, in the light of uh, this uh, data, uh, we could say that uh, Afrin operation is carefully. Uh, organized and uh, successfully uh, conducted uh, in the ground as well as uh, in the air. Thank you so much, Professor Bilal Sambur, for being on Tactical Talk. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me at the show. This was Bilal Sambur, the senior expert on Turkey and Middle Eastern affairs for Tactical Talk and also an educationist and also a professor in Turkey. We were discussing Operation Olive Branch. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Anne Khan. Take care and goodbye.